for today's grim adventure, we find ourselves in New Orleans. We've been here many times, we've visited many of the different cemeteries, but this is the very first time that we're gonna be spending almost a day in what's known as the Metairie Cemetery. Now what's really special about this, this is the cemetery where Anne Rice is buried. Jessica and I love visiting New Orleans, but sadly, we're only here for two days. Now, since Anne Rice passed, we've been wanting to come back here to pay our respects, and like I said, today we're doing it. Now, this isn't the first time that we've done a video on Anne Rice. With that being said, for this video in particular, we're gonna be visiting a couple other well-known Anne Rice locations. And since this is our first time inside this cemetery, we're gonna walk around a little bit and take in some of the statues and some of the mausoleums because this place is beautiful. It's not as well known as like St. Louis Cemetery number one, but it should be. I mean, now it has Anne Rice here. And world-renowned author and Rancho Mirage resident Anne Rice has died at the age of 80. Last night, her son announced she passed away after suffering complications from a stroke. News Channel 3 Samantha Lummebao takes us through her life and the legacy she now leaves behind. It's a quest for, you know, to ask why are we here? What's going on? I mean, to me, the paranormal is a really powerful way to talk about that. Anne Rice's gothic novels have captured readers worldwide, starting in 1976 when she released her first book and bestseller, Interview with a Vampire. When I happened onto this idea of interviewing a vampire and letting him speak, my whole world opened up. About 20 years later, the book was turned into a film starring Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt. When I become a vampire or a witch or when I write about that subject, I'm able to write about good and evil and guilt and pain and death and life in a way that I can't when trying to write realistically. That's when Rice embarked on her journey to tell the tales of vampires. She went on to write more than 30 books, including the popular 13 book series, The Vampire Chronicles. Rice took an 11 year break after releasing her 10th book back in 2003. It's a good thing, I think, to take a break from a series and do some thinking and pondering and some other experiments in fiction, stuff worth traveling, and, you know, maybe moving. I, I wrote the last book in New Orleans. Um, I've lived out here for years. I have a fresh perspective on things. And in 2014, News Channel 3 spoke with her about Prince Lestat, the 11th book in the series. It's hard to describe it, but this character, Lestat, my vampire hero, is more real to me than anybody I've ever written about, anybody I've ever cooked up. And he has a way of coming back to me and tapping me on the shoulder and saying, talk about me, and you know. Her success eventually helped ignite a renewed interest in the vampire genre, which continued with the Vampire Diary series in Twilight Films. For News Channel 3, I'm Samantha Lamibo. As soon as we pulled into the cemetery, I was a little overwhelmed because this place is massive and it is filled with mausoleums. Now, truth be told, Anne Rice's mausoleum looks just like everybody else's here and I thought for sure we were gonna have a hard time finding it. And then I saw this mausoleum over here on the left and it reminded me of a picture I saw of the day of Anne Rice's funeral. It was a rainy, windy day and the cemetery built this, well, they put up this white tent that was attached to the Rice family mausoleum so people wouldn't get rained on, protected, if you will. And I was like, this is it. It's like three or four mausoleums down. And I was right. Well, it's a hot day, so Jessica obviously has been walking around with her umbrella. We got sunscreen, it's over 100 degrees. I'm just very thankful that we didn't have to spend too much time out here in the sun looking for it. And this is it right here. Simple.
but beautiful. Because this is a private mausoleum, there's absolutely no way of getting inside unless you're a member of the family, which we are not, so it's not gonna happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you about the three people that are on the inside. The first one being Anne Rice herself. She died December 11th, 2021 at the age of 80, complications of a stroke. She had two kids, Christopher, who's still alive, and he's an author, and Michelle, who I do believe died in 1972 from leukemia. Also inside the mausoleum is Anne Rice's husband of 41 years, a man by the name of Stanley. He died of brain cancer. He was a, a poet as well as a painter. Standing here in person, Jessica and I were able to walk up to the glass, look in and squint just right and read Anne Rice's name. She's on the right-hand side of the mausoleum. On the left-hand side, directly across from her, like directly across is her husband, Stanley. Above him is Michelle, and I'm only guessing that eventually whenever Christopher Rice passes, he'll be on the right-hand side above his mother. At first glance, all that you see on the mausoleum is the word Rice, but there's more writing on the left-hand side. And Jessica and I were just asking ourselves, what's the difference between a tomb and a mausoleum? Now, I'm guessing a tomb is a final resting place of one person while a mausoleum is an entire family whether it's two or more i see what i mean over on this side looks like there's some poems from stan rice three different ones there now i'm not going to go ahead and read them out loud but i'm gonna get a little close up so you can pause the screen and you can read them if you'd like here's the first one it says look Stan Rice, 1975. This one here is Psalm 212. Stan Rice, 2003. And here's the third and last one, Psalm 203. Again, Stan Rice, 2003. Now here's a couple different observations about the final resting place of Anne Rice and her family. One, there's no trees. It is, the sun is beating down like it's trying to kill a vampire. No pun intended, or maybe a little punny. And there's no statues. There's statues everywhere here. Now there's one very unique one right next to the Rice family, right over there. And Jessica absolutely fell in love with it. So much so that what did you say, baby ghoul? We vampires have a bit of a flair for the dramatic. I thought I'd come all the way from Pasadena to visit my nightmiller. I should give her a statue. She I... deserves a statue. Yes. Eh. The sun is, is pretty, pretty horrible. Pardon me when I lower my morning shroud. It is too early in the morning. We have a, a few more tales of Anne Rice to tell in this video before we leave New Orleans. And you know we travel a lot, and we love cemeteries. There are no cemeteries in the United States that look anything like what you find here in New Orleans. It just blows my mind every time we come here. I, I never get tired of it. And look at this, right? Wait till you see what's behind this gate. Oh my. Beautiful. Off in the distance, we saw what looked like a burnt out church, almost like the ruins of a church that you would see in something like World War II or something like that after a bombing. 
it's up there on the left, you can kind of see the tower. So we're going to walk over to it. Now, visiting cemeteries here in New Orleans, this is an experience. It's not just, hey, let's just go visit a cemetery. It's an experience. Look at that one over there. It kind of looks like roots or maybe even a brain. What we came here for is that one right there. Can you walk up inside it? Now, let it be known, Jessica and I, we've been mulling this over in our head for quite some time, and we've decided that somewhere in Los Angeles, in one of the cemeteries, we're going to build a mausoleum for us before we die. And then that way, anybody who's a fan wants to come out and pay their respects to our final resting place before we're gone. Now, of course, we're gonna make it something very interesting. You can. Look at that. This is truly something. This is cool. Right? And it's made to look uh, broken and decayed intentionally because you can see the detail and how they've chiseled it out. It's, it's not a natural um, crumbling of the stone. It's been decorated that way. And I think that's just, that's genius. I love it. I want to do something like that. Now, when we were here, the very first time that we ever came to New Orleans, we went to St. Louis Cemetery number one. It was beautiful, don't get me wrong. Beautiful. But this cemetery, I think, is a lot more picturesque than that one is. The history might be there, but this one here is just downright amazing. I just had an idea. What was your idea? I love when I see cemeteries that have uh, the little... Um, keyholes? Yeah. I don't know if they're real keyholes, but they look like keyholes. I want to do it where ours has a keyhole that you move the thing, all of them have them, but when you actually look through it, there's a piece of like stained glass or something, like those old uh, um, tourist things you would get from like the zoo that had an yeah. image on the, the inside. Yeah, the viewfinder things. View Thank you. Uh, and, and it could be a picture of us. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. I'd like that. I want to do it. When it comes to the funeral for Anne Rice, of course there's no pictures or video, but that's okay. Because throughout her life, every time she did a book signing or some sort of strange appearance, she would often show up in a coffin, via hearse. At one point, she even, as a publicity stunt for one of her books, she hosted her own funeral. Not too far from where Anne Rice lived here in the Garden District, there's a bookstore known as the Garden District Bookshop. And there's a couple different videos online of her showing up in a hearse in a coffin for some of her book signings. It's really cool to watch. Now, what's really cool about this bookstore is last time we were here, they had all these first editions signed by Anne Rice herself, but the, the, the crown jewel, if you will, they had a photo album with pictures from whenever she did her mock funeral for one of her uh, publicity things. So we're gonna go inside and see if they still have it. At the beginning of this video, you're gonna see two police officers on horseback watching the line as the camera pans to the front of this building. Now, of course, the railings up there on the second floor look a little different, but for the most part, it's still the same. In fact, the giant sign that said Anne Rice book signing was right there on the front of the building. Now the hearse pulls up, they stop right in front of the main doors here, and pallbearers dressed as Ghostface from Scream, I love it, pull a coffin with Anne Rice inside out, and they set her right on the ground in front of the, the doors, and she gets out, and she just has a smile on her face.
Jessica's over here looking at some signed Anne Rice books. The Vampire Chronicles, signed. It's beautiful. Well, some of these are also first edition. And presentation copies. Oh, wow. They're stunning. It's pretty much Anne Rice books as far as the eye can see. Like, I love this Coffin of Terror. And when we leave the bookstore, we're going to go over to the cemetery that these photos were taken at, where she held her, her mock funeral in her wedding dress. It was beautiful. Sadly, you can't get into the cemetery anymore. It's been closed for years for renovations, but it has not been opened. Now you can see the sign right there, Lafayette Cemetery. I'll show you the sign in a little bit. Beautiful, right? Just look at that. Now that is a smile. Right, inside the bookstore, remember I told you I was going to point out the sign? Lafayette Cemetery number one. This is it. This is where she had her mock funeral. The it's like a promotional thing for her book, Memnock the Devil. And like I said, you can't get in the cemetery. It's been closed for renovations for quite some time. Each time, wait, what, we've been here for maybe three times now? Over five years. And each time it's been closed. Mm -hmm. We're going to walk around the cemetery, look through some of the gates. It's funny, every time we come here, we're always on that side back there, so we're going to take a different path around the block. I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of getting David Bowie labyrinth feels right now. Like you're walking through it to the castle, right? <laughs> At any point, Hoggle's going to come out or those fairies. If you see a, a pixie, don't touch it. They bite. I don't know if you can hear it, but we're getting some thunder. The last thing we want is some lightning while we're out and about filming. Lightning and rain. But we've never been to this side of the Lafayette Cemetery number one. Oh, wow. 
All right, that's truly ominous. Let's see if I can look through the bars. Decided to change up the video a little bit. I was going to go over to the house that everybody knows as Ann Rice's. Everybody goes there, the tours go there. We've been there a few different times. But I thought, hey, where did she live last here in New Orleans before Ann Rice moved out to California to be closer to her son, Christopher? And that place is this beautiful building right here. It says St. Elizabeth's above the front door. And that's because at one point, it was an orphanage. And at one point, it was an asylum. And at one point, Ann Rice owned this place. And at one point, this is where she kept her creepy, creepy doll collection. And then you hear all those stories about all the different parties that she would throw. It was here, there were Halloween parties. It was here. And now it's condominiums. But it's beautiful, right? I almost missed this. Hidden in the bushes, it says St. Elizabeth's Asylum. A little plaque there. I'm not going to go ahead and read it, but you're more than welcome to just kind of pause it, read it, and then hit play again. Talk about hidden. Well, that's a bit of a bummer. There's one statue here. There's supposed to be a second one over on the other side of the steps, and it looks like at one point it broke off or something. At least there's still just one there. Not only did Anne Rice leave behind a legacy of work, vampire lore, and mummies, and witches, and some racy titles, as well as some religious titles, but she also left behind architectural masterpieces like this that her and her family took care of. I always wanted to go to one of her parties. Never got to. But at least you can come down here to New Orleans and walk the path of Anne Rice. With that being said, thank you for joining us on another grim adventure. This time, the final resting place of Anne Rice and telling her story in New Orleans. Happy Halloween. Never stays a day. A bad luck's always a common